Lynn, do you want to sing your song? Welcome, 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 welcome to Snacks. Yay! Welcome back to the Snacks podcast, everyone. We missed you all over the summer. We it's have Sam and Lynn. You. It's us again. Welcome back. We are so excited to start this up again. Um, and so let's just jump right into it. Yes. If you're listening to this podcast, you're probably aware of what's been going on within our team and the league. A big part of what this podcast is all about is having open, hard, and transparent conversations. But Lynn and I are still processing what happened. Uh, we've been focusing internally as a team, and we've been supporting each other um, as best we can during this time. Um, firstly, firstly, firstly. <laughs> Personally, it's, it, does, it sounds weird to um, laugh during this time, but. Yes, if you're listening to this, you're probably aware of what's been going on uh, with our team and in the league. And a big part of what this podcast is all about is having open, hard and transparent conversations. But Lynn and I are still processing what happened. Um, we've been focusing internally as a team um, and supporting each other as best we can during this time. Firstly, we stand with and commend Sinead, Mana, and all the players who have bravely come forward um, and shared their stories. We don't condone any behavior of sexual assault or abuse in any form, and it has no place in our league or in society. The strength of the women who've come forward has sparked a necessary systemic change to create a more open, transparent, and safe environment for players. An environment where players feel comfortable coming forward and where all people are treated with respect, integrity, and feel empowered to have a voice. Thank you all for listening and understanding that we, when the time is right, we will speak more openly, but it has been a very heavy week and we are still getting through our thoughts um, together. So we want to reiterate to girls, women, athletes, people in general of all ages, you have value and you have a voice. Yes. So thanks for your patience. Um, we hope to, again, talk more about this as the season goes on, but right now we would love to talk about what we've been up to, what, how the summer was and kind of just transition into another thing this podcast is about, which is hopefully laughing and having a good time, which I think would be good for both of us. I couldn't agree more. Um, I think with the heavy week, we would love just to, um, have some lighthearted time. Um, so take it away. I hope you guys understand that. <laughs> so Lynn, it is October. Um, we've had a long summer and half of the fall into since we've spoken to our listeners. So how are you? I'm good. Yeah. That's such a long time. We have so much to fill everybody in on. Um, I don't even know where to start. Maybe we could start with just where we are right now. Um, yeah. Well, where are you? <clears throat> I am at home in Boston. Um, I unfortunately have had this little lingering knee issue for a while. So I got a scope to clean it up and I'm just still working my way back to being able to play. Um, I've been doing PT and training here at home. Um, I have like just a really good setup here and, and really trust the people that I work with. I've been working with them for my whole professional career. So, um, I feel like it was the, the best place for me to be, to work my way back. Um, but I am more than ready to get back to North Carolina. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I will make my transition down there and keep working to, to try to be able to play again, um, soon and come to me. I know I miss my girls. I know um, you. it's been like bittersweet being home. I think coming off the Olympics, which we will get to, um, it's been nice to have like kind of some time to reflect, I guess. Um, and I've gotten to see my family like more than ever, um, which has also been really nice. I, I have not lived in this house for so long since, um, we got it. So that part has been great as well, but I'm definitely ready to be around the team again. And so I'm hoping that my knee just keeps on healing and I can make that transition soon. Keep on keeping on. How is Finn? Oh. I, I just love him more and more and more. I was just dancing with him in the kitchen, singing him a love song. And I think Pat thought I was singing to him. And then I was like, no, I'm singing to Finn. 
How dare you think that, Pat? Yeah. I mean, Finn is the best. Um, so what are some of like the perks of being home? I feel like you've been able to like get a little sense of normalcy. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, it's like bittersweet. I, I am definitely so happy being home. Um, but I have this kind of like deep sense that like, I know that like I, I should be elsewhere kind of Mm. like, and, and I can't play right now. So it's, it's not like necessarily true, but I, it's not like I feel this like freedom. Like I want to be playing and I know that my team is playing right now. So I also have this kind of deep sense that I want to make it to North Carolina and like be with the team. Um, and I think that like, just reminds me that I want to just keep working really hard so that I can try to get back. Um, but perks of being home are definitely living in my house, seeing my parents a lot, uh, seeing my in-laws a lot. Like i me and Pat have been together for a long stint now, which is like pretty rare for us. So that's been really fun. Um, and I feel like I'm in like a good routine. I've seen a lot of progress with my knee. I've seen a lot of progress at the gym and at PT and, um, it's rewarding to have results coming. So, um, there are obviously ups and downs all through like the rehab process, but I think every time you kind of reach a new milestone, it can be really exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just love being in Boston. It's just like so nice here. I, I really like getting, it's such a perfect time to be home. Um, the leaves are starting to change and it's like mm-hmm. starting to be like fall. And you know, I love October in general, my birthday's this weekend. So, um, I know. So it's been really great, but again, can't reiterate enough how bad I want to get to North Carolina. I know. I just want to say, like, I think that one of the hardest things, um, being an athlete and being a part of a team is that like accepting that you're hurt sometimes and like having to step away from the team. And like, some people might think it's easier, like, Oh, you get a break and you get to be home and you get to be with family. But like, you're so tied to the team and you want to Mm -hmm. play so bad that like taking yourself out is actually like one of the hardest things. So I just think that you need to just do you when your knee is all better, you'll be back driving through the midfield, scoring all the goals. (laughs) So you just take your time. Well, thanks. Not too much time. I, I know I am, I'm almost ready and I have made some great progress. Even today, I made good progress today. So I'm excited about that. Um, I know. And I can't wait to get back down there and hang out with my girls. Um, speaking of hanging out, how's the courage? How was this week and how have you been? Well, as noted in the statement heavy, um, but, um, without getting into everything, I, like I said, I don't think I'm like just ready to talk about it yet. Um, I will say that, um, Sean has come in and really helped us and has stepped up and, um, we really respect him. Um, and he's just an all around great human. And, um, I just think it was so brave and courageous, um, for us to take the field. I'm really proud of the performance we put on last night. Um, we obviously won, but I think even just playing the game was a win, um, and so it, it's just like a new beginning, I think, um, a freshness. Um, we have obviously a long way to go um, with systemic change in the league um, and then the club, but it's a new step um, in the right direction. So um, yeah, I think, I think it's going to be good. Um, but I do have this random, to change subjects, this random yeah. story. And I can't wait to hear this. You've been, t- you've been telling me you have a random story to tell for like two weeks and I've been like, what is it? I know. And now I've like talked it up so much. It's like not even going to be funny anymore. <laughs> me sitting here like, is this really what she's been waiting to tell me? <laughs> okay. So we were on a trip to, I can't remember where we're going, but in natural and fashion, I decided to do everything last minute. Mm-hmm. And so I put my clothes in the washer and then the dryer. And I realized that all my socks were in the dryer, but we had no time. And I was like, I want these specific socks. I need Mm -hmm. to like get them drying. But I didn't want to take all of the clothes out of the dryer because they were like in that weird stage. And I was like, I can't take them all out of the dryer. I got this brilliant idea. I'll put the wet clothes, wet socks on a paper towel and I put them in the microwave. Sam, I put my socks in the microwave (laughs) thinking thinking they were going to 
dry them because I was like, oh, dry or heat, no, microwave like heat. just got hot. They just got hot. Yeah, they just got hot and steamy and I pulled them out and they were steaming hot. And you know what I did? I took those steaming hot socks and I shoved them in my bag and I said, we gotta go. That's my story. On, did you wear them on the trip? Yeah, of course I wore them on the trip. What the See, heck? Lynn, that is, that's one of those things Actually, I'm going to say like that, why you missed me as your roommate, but it's like, if you had asked me that in the moment, I would have just been like, yeah, try it. And then we would have just had hot steaming socks together. So like, I, I wouldn't have even saved you from it. Yeah. I was like, this is a brilliant idea. And then the second I took them out, I was like, well, of course they just steamed like, obviously. Well, yeah. Otherwise I feel like anything you put in the microwave would just dry out. Yeah. I mean, it didn't make much sense. I get that now. Um, at the time I thought heat, heat heat dries things it doesn't so if you anybody's my, listening don't put your socks in the microwave you know what my you know when you'd have like a club tournament and you'd have to like just like wear your sweaty uniform again then like the next afternoon or the next day or whatever yeah we used to flat roll down our windows a little bit stick our socks and <laughs> like wet stuff in the windows roll them up and then we'd drive around so that they'd like dry out a little bit sounds like it's clean and then we just and then we would just like put back on like the sweaty like socks and jersey. Yuck. With but that, like, I'm like flapping out the window. But like, oh. what, 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 what would you have done with the sock situation? Would you have just taken the damp wet socks and shoved them? In? I guess that's exactly what I did because they didn't dry at all. Well, I feel like I sometimes like don't leave things to the last minute. But yeah, just, if just I sometimes, had, what would I have done? Yeah, I probably would have just taken them and dried them at the hotel, like on the desk or something, like laid them out to dry. Yeah, I made I made an error. It wasn't I my mean, finest moment. It's okay, Lynn. Let's move on. Let's, Let's go to move on. Stuff. Okay, yeah. I mean, the Olympics. You and made the roster. Yeah, you talk about a up and down of emotions. Um <laughs> I think, I think if I were to go back, actually, this was really cute. Marley um, went back and was like listening to our last podcast right before the Olympics. And it was obviously to me talking about just how I obviously wanted to make that 18. I didn't make the 18. Um, and he was just like, it's so crazy to look now and see everything that like happened. Um, and it is like, I made the roster, like I, didn't expect to. And then I made it. And then I thought that when I went into the Australia game, it was going to be, that was it for me. So everybody listening, like if you made a roster, you were then considered an Olympian. So until I made uh, an actual 18, um, I was still considered like uh, an alternate. And so Vladko came up to me after I found out I was rostering and just said, I told Kate that every single person here, I wanted to make sure that um, they were Olympians and I would do everything in my power to do that. And so when I went into the Australia game in the last 15 minutes, first of all, not the ideal Olympic debut. It was kind of a snooze fest. Um, went in and was just walking on the field. It looks like they weren't going to try to go for it. We didn't want to concede a goal. It was a weird experience. Um, and so after that game, I was having like so many emotions of, I'm so blessed and honored to be considered an Olympian and get on the field, not the role I wanted at all. Um, and so I was like, great. Like that was my Olympic debut. That was all I was going to play. And that kind of stinks, but also super grateful. Um, and so then the next game when we were playing in the Netherlands and uh, we had a team meeting before training and he said my name as I was starting and thank God I was wearing a mask because I was in so much shock, Sam. I was like, me? Like, I'm, I'm starting. Williams? I was like, I think you messed it up. Um, so I was in such shock uh, that I, I was like, immediately like, Lynn, you got to focus. Like, focus on the meeting. Focus what he's got to say. Um, and and then, then the it happened. We played the Netherlands and we both scored a goal. I know. You assisted mine and I claimed for a minute that I had assisted yours until I watched the film and realized I actually didn't really, but still. But you challenged the ball, therefore making her head it down to me. So I count that as an assist. You lose every head ball you don't jump for. Well, not necessarily, but 
you know what you know what I'm trying to say you know and then say. you crossed me this beautiful little chip cross and I dove <laughs> yeah dude you dove it was you so unlike me <laughs> you dove your head straight into the ground but it was I great. did I really did and it went in so I would say that was probably like one of the highlights for us was that game we both scored we did it together and then my god we had to watch the PKs and we you know when you're screaming so much for so long and so loud that after the scream ends your head hurts but it's like you wait for it like you're like yeah and then you stop and you're like oh my god it's coming it's coming and then your head just throbs yeah like being so anxious the whole time and then screaming your head off going putting I just remember I had my hands on my knees watching the entire game then I would stand up and scream my head off get a head rush go oh my god put my yeah. hands back on my knees, watch it. And it just was repeated. I was like, yeah. I think I'm going to have a brain injury. Yeah. It was, it was very stressful watching, which I, and I mean, I'm sure it was also stressful playing and taking a PK. God bless those girls. God but bless those of us on the sideline were, <laughs> Oh my God. And then Alyssa, I know we were like, not supposed to, we didn't have this to talk about, but like Alyssa stopping a million I, PKs. Like what? I know she's just such a G yeah. Oh, sports, man. Emotions. Yeah. Pa- man, passion. <laughs> I was going to say another something, but I couldn't think of literally anything. <laughs> Tenacity. The going. Determination. <laughs> Skill. Mental fortitude. Okay. Enough. Enough. But yeah, the Olympics were... I mean, obviously we didn't uh, win gold, but we won rose gold. We all decided we're rebranding. Actually, Pino came up with that. So um, that's cool. But yeah, it was, it was, I think such a unique Olympics, just with the pandemic getting pushed back a year, um, opening the roster up from 18. um, the amount of times we spent on the bus traveling like yeah yeah how we couldn't go outside couldn't go outside hotel. it was definitely a unique experience and I'm so grateful that I got to go I think that having my 2016 experience where I was an alternate and never made the roster um really like put this kind of hunger to make an Olympic roster in me mm-hmm. and so I think I feel like I think winning bronze, I mean, it's all like a good lesson, I think is what I'm trying to take away from it. I think that I obviously wish that I had played better and kind of lived up to my expectations for myself. Um, And I think in the same way that 2016 was motivation for me to make a roster, winning bronze is now motivation for me to want to win gold. So my hope is that I could make another roster and go back and win gold that time. So that's what I think we both have our sights set on for the future. Mm -hmm. Um, But like I said earlier, I think for now, it's been actually really good for me to have some time to reflect on um, just the whole thing and and the years leading up to it. And um, I think there was definitely a lot to learn from that experience for us as a team. So I'm excited to see how we bounce back from that. I know. I I think the same thing. like you said, obviously super grateful to medal. Um, I yeah. think that the scariest part of pl- playing in a bronze medal match is the fact that you might not medal, um, but also having the the opportunity to even be in that match. I think mm-hmm. everybody just needs to remember that like that's so not many people can say they're bronze medalists. Um, yeah. But yeah, reflecting and just like, I... I'm so grateful that they opened up the roster and I was able to play, but I want to be on the roster and not have it opened up. I just want to Mm -hmm. be on the 18. I obviously don't know what they're going to do forward, but, Mm -hmm. um, and and then I I want to win a gold medal. (laughs) Me too, sis. Me too. Well, we have a bunch more Olympic stories and actually a bunch of random stuff that we got to talk about with Megan Rapino. We sat down with her a couple of weeks ago to do an interview for this episode. Um, and we are so excited for you all to hear it. We talked to her about what it's like to be in the spotlight, to be a fashion icon and her relationship with Sue and tons more. 
Um, it was great. It was a great conversation and we couldn't get her off the call. Um, we literally could not. We stayed on the Zoom and talked to her for like 30 minutes after. Yeah, it, like she, I, I don't know what she's been doing, but she's craving communication. So <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy um, our interview with her. I'm sure it was a mess, but it was also a beautiful mess. Beautiful win. Okay, here's Megan Rapino. And now we'd like to bring on this week's guest from OL Reign and the U.S. Women's National Team. Please welcome Megan Rapino, the queen herself. Put your little hey, crown ladies. on. Welcome to the show, Maggie. We're so excited to have you. Oh, gosh, you call so me so excited. It's just oh, LOLs. Are best. you excited to be on the show? Because when I asked you to be on here, you responded in 0.5 seconds. I'm very excited. I know. Well, so we were, excited. we were brainstorming guests and we were like, okay, like who's our aspirational guest Pino. And then Lynn was like, I'll just ask, asked, said, yes, you're literally the first one we're doing for this, this next group of shows. So we're pretty pumped. I love it. I think we're actually going to like get into that later. How you must have, you know, you must have so ben. much going on. I know. I'm going to just let him out the door. Lynn. I'm going to leave it to you for <laughs> one second. <laughs> we'll uh, bring him up here. Oh huh? yeah. Hey, probably everybody. just bring him oh, up. Oh no. Because no. Clearly they're Sam. Wiling. Oh, oh you, can't get, you can't go too far in this little room, buddy. Okay. Finn. Just an absolute nonsense all the time. Put headphones on him. <gasps> on Finn? Gosh. Yeah. And he can, then he can hear his aunties? Yeah. Hello, Hi, Mr. See. Finn. <gasps> Hello. Mr. Finn hears you. He's the Hello. biggest boy. <laughs> well, you he right oh, up. he's being very good. Do you have anything to say? I'm freaked out. Oh, oh my god he loved that he did um, love that okay well back to the serious podcast <laughs> okay so anyways p um do you remember the first time you met us oh my gosh i mean i feel like i met sam like 18 years ago which isn't actually possible but i i did know christy before i knew sam but only by just a little bit, I think. And was all was an Algarve trip your first trip? I don't think so. I think I had a domestic trip before that. Or I came to practice a couple of times in LA first. I do remember one of my very first camps though, they had me playing outside back because I was just the utility. I was playing wherever they needed someone to play. And I was, I was starting to dribble down the field and I go, oh, I'm good at dribbling. I'm just going to dribble on down the field. Pino slide tackled me, stole the ball. I'm laying on the side of the field, dribbles down, crosses it, and the other team scores. And I was just like, I don't belong here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first of all, what were you doing at outside outside back? back? Wild. The next wildest thing, which is wilder than you being outside back. What was I doing defending like that? You def you slid tackle slide tackled the ball away from me and dribbled down the field, and I went. Who do I, I think I, I am? I, I mean, it was incredible. One of my first memories of the team. <laughs> just a rude awakening. <laughs> yeah, just like, don't get ahead of yourself, Sam. <laughs> Relax. You are a girl amongst women. <laughs> stay, stay in the back line and do better. Um, Lynn, but do you I remember when was, you met Gino? I think it was at Algarve where I really, that's when Tom was the coach, right? Yeah. Yeah, shout out Tom Shimani. We love him. Oh, yeah. Um, Lenny, oh gosh. I mean. I know, same same. I have that same feeling. I don't really know. I think I remember one camp I came into and like, it was like you and press and Carly, like we're all walking into the meal room. And I was, I was like, act cool. Lynn, be don't cool. freak out, be cool, be calm. But that's like all I remember. Yeah. I, I like, like a blackout. I, I blacked out a lot of the jail years too. So I can't climb a figure on it. Um, it must have been like a January camp or like, yeah. was it like during an NWSL season? No, it had to be a January camp because, well, were you in that camp in October? This is way back in 2016. Well, not that far back for you, but way back for me. <laughs> oh my gosh, 2016. And I don't think you came into that October camp because I came in with in like, Utah? Yeah, in Utah. Were you there? Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, that's my first camp. 
And I think yeah, you guys were I, like, this yeah. is wild because there were so many new people. I think I came in with like 10 people. Yeah. And, yeah. and everybody was like, who are you? Teeny boppers. Yeah, that was the camp that like I had just <laughs> come off my ACL after like 2015, oh, yeah. coming back in. We obviously did terrible in the Olympics, yada, yada, yada. And then I came back, was playing fine in the league. And then um, Jill at the time was like, I think we're just like, you, we're, you just need a little rest. I was like, oh, that's funny. I'm pretty sure I knew the opposite, but okay. But I wasn't there. Lynn for your first camp. How devastating for me. I know. For both of us. Yeah. Well, then fast forward to us and Crystal staying up till like 4 a.m. At, at, after the oh Olympics meeting said by the elevators. Having ourselves a ball. <laughs> Lenny, I do re always remember you had great style. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I can't say the same for you, Sam. But I, I don't expect you to, but we do. We do have a hilarious style question for you, but it's coming later in the show. But it's just oh, like, this, this is like such a like telling moment. The fact that Sam, we have very different skin colors and we're both wearing the same color beige. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. <laughs> so great. You guys, I, don't care. I, bring, I bring other things to the table. I don't care that much. You okay, Pino, so this- podcast is called snacks we talk about personal stuff what how does it go soccer stuff real stuff fun stuff we're just doing a little intro favorite snack that you would have with a glass of wine wine's not considered the snack no you're <laughs> eating something with the wine I guess. what kind of wine well what kind of wine let's start well there. i'm definitely gonna be more so drinking either a sparkling wine or a sparkling rosé, champagne, whatever. Love that. Or if I'm getting into red wine, um, like a Pinot Noir or a Burgundy, which is the region in France that does Pinot Noir. I'm not a wine connoisseur, but well, I, just Pinot, want something I do know, know that much. We're going to have Pinot with Pinot. Yeah. We should have. <sighs> and a everybody... snack to go with it. I mean, if I can have a full blown charcuterie board with meats and cheeses. Uh. And fruits and grapes and like the whole thing but like even just some really good cheese with the wine boom i mean i am also not opposed to a chip and salsa and a wine it's better Ugh. with a beer but a chips and salsa are undefeated snacks you're speaking our language <sighs> two things have you had charcuterie with pepper jelly yeah <laughs> that yes. stuff is good yeah. oh yeah yeah i can't um, and, get enough and two have you had, have you ever squeezed lime on your like salami? No. Dabinia brought it to our lives and it's amazing. Lime on the salams, huh? Yeah. Not on the cheese though. Lime on the salams and the cheese. Yeah. Well, you put it on the salami and then you kind of like make yourself a little like pepper jelly, salami, cheese, cracker. It's a flavor wow. blast in your mouth. It's bomb. Okay. And it's really good. Well, I'm here. I, I will be purchasing limes for my next charcuterie board. I love constructing the whole charcuterie board too. The whole culture oh, yeah. around charcuterie boards is really where I'm at. Charcuterie culture. <laughs> charcuterie <laughs> culture. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this is that. um, me and Sam would um, literally do all the time in quarantine. We would just, that's probably why I gained yeah. five pounds, but it's fine. It's yeah. fine. Oh, yeah. Oh God, absolutely. Yeah, there was just days where I was like, we've let it go. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm still working out, but like, ugh, it's not, it wasn't, it wasn't it just, it an apartment yeah. workouts really weren't enough. It just got uh, away from us there. Yeah. Well, we have heard um, you say multiple times about like your rule with food is 80 20 and how um, you got with a trainer and like changed your whole diet. Can you like talk about that a little bit more with us of like, how you keep what yourself happened? in like tip top shape or like, yeah, talk us through that journey. Do you guys consider me in tip top shape? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Oh, love to hear that. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, basically this was the whole journey. Like I, you know, started early in my career. I feel like I've always like have, have like eaten healthy and generally like, you know, had a good like sort of plan, but go whatever i'm like 30 years old i've now had my third acl injury and i feel like that's kind of just about the time where your body just kind of changes anyways and like 
I think this happens for athletes and especially for female athletes is like you go the first part of your career and you can kind of just like do what you're doing. And of course you have to like eat well and do, you know, all the things and, and work out. But then there comes this time where like you need to like change something or you just get old really fast. And I got really lucky because I met Sue and Sue ha- is five years older than me and she like w- kind of went through this period. She had had like a knee injury and she was working with this woman. Um, Susan Borchard, who was working with the Storm at the time, who uh, played basketball at Stanford like years ago, Um, even though she's shorter than me, I was like, well, that's incredible um, being a basketball player. I mean, I wish I could play in the WNBA, but maybe there's still hope. So anyway, Sue had kind of like gone through that and already like changed her whole situation up right when we met. And of course, I was like smitten in love. And I was like, well, I'm just going to pretty much do, you know, whatever Sue's doing. And also kind of coupled with that at the time, um, I was a little on the outs with Joe and the national team because of the whole kneeling situation. Um, they didn't really take well to that. So I had like missed some camps, um, like wasn't really playing in the games. I had like, um, you know, I would, like had gone to a January camp and then like wasn't going to She Believes. So I was kind of just like had a lot more free time. And so I was just like working out and eating the way Sue did. And we were just kind of like it was sort of new territory for both of us because we were like in this new relationship, but I also like had all this time on my hands and she was in her off season. So it wasn't like I, I like drastically changed everything, but it was more like what I was eating and when, and like the philosophy behind it. So I was like eating a lot less in the morning. Like I would wake up in the morning, have like, you know, eggs and like maybe some fruit or something. And then I would go do my training. It was like no carbs, like I wasn't really fueling enough for the training that I needed to do, which like basically like, you know, I wasn't able to train at my highest capacity. And then I wasn't like refueling the way that I necessarily needed to. I think I was kind of like, okay, eat healthy, like in the morning and whatever. And then, you know, like even like not carbo loading at night, but just a little bit more carbs at night. And I kind of like flipped that all around. So like in the morning and um after my workouts it was like way more carb heavy so um my famous breakfast sandwiches well they're sue's famous breakfast sandwiches but i am getting a little bit sick of them but i just can't break away because i don't want to think about like what i would have to do <laughs> is to this, get what i is, need let me see if i know this is this an english muffin with yeah. eggs over medium with onions and sauteed spinach yeah the eggs need to kind of be over hard because otherwise they like get everywhere like i it's like i yeah. like a runny egg much better yeah. but for a sandwich for a sandwich it's like <clears throat> popping out everywhere and i don't want to lose any of the yolk so i couldn't yeah, think of anything mostly, worse yeah oh i know for and breakfast like down your hand as like well a uh, runny oh i thought you were saying a fizz this sandwich and i was like what no, do you mean? Oh you know i hate eggs i know oh Lindsay you don't need eggs no, I eat one. them. I she just... chokes them down with like toast. She takes a bite of egg and then a bite of toast with like jam or avocado and like to drown out the taste. Like she literally hates oh, eggs. Wow. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> okay, sorry. I didn't know I'm that. I don't know how shamed, that has shamed slipped me. under my radar all these years. That's crazy. I know, I'm shameful. Anyways, yeah, so I feel like I just like, was training harder because I was doing all these workouts Sue was doing and she, she was already in a better place with them. So I didn't want to like look bad. So I was doing the best I could trying to keep up and then changing the whole diet. So I feel like I was actually able to like train harder and train a lot more and train like specifically for like peak performance during my training. And then everything was kind of like based around that. And then of course you still have to live. You have to eat your security boards. You got to like, Totally. get into your wine game you gotta like pizza loved pizza and fried chicken every now and again mm-hmm. and yeah you can't like drive yourself nuts with it but i think i just got like a little bit more specific and disciplined with what i was doing did you notice like your body changing as well yeah oh my gosh it changed like because i always thought of myself as like fit and i was you know a professional athlete. I'm like, I've, you know, got it going on over here. And I just became like way leaner and like way stronger. I was like, like more cut and like everything. Yeah. And only like in a matter of like a couple of months, cause I was already like doing most of the training and 
whatever, but just kind of like switching that up a little bit. And then like at night, we don't really do like, not a, like pastas or breads or anything at night, be more like sweet potatoes or spaghetti squash or stuff like that. Cool. Yeah, my nice. body changed a lot though. Um, sorry, I feel like I'm asking all the questions, Sam, but I just, I have a lot going on in this brain. But, Please. Um, so our, just to like switch focuses a little bit, um, you have also, you obviously mentioned Sue a couple of times. Um, is there anything that like she does on the court where you're just like, damn, that's my girl. Like, is there like a moment? Is there this one thing that she does or is it like the whole time? <laughs> well, it is the whole time. I think it's well documented. I am a big fan just in general. So I love her so much, but she's always doing these like little no looks and they really do get me every time. Also, I like don't really know what's coming. I have a hard time anticipating what's coming in basketball because I don't like really know totally what's going on. I like kind of do. But she does this like look away situation that's like, especially in transition, because like she just sees things like way before they're happening. So she's always like hitting people up the court, but she's always like doing this look away pass. And I'm obviously looking where she's looking. And then I'm faked out every time. <laughs> Do you ever just catch your eye and like wink while she makes the pass? Finds you in the stands, does a no looker just she's, for you. She's not looking over at me. She's no. focused. There's like nothing uh, that, you, that you're like when what you boss. when you score, like do this for me. That never happens. There's not like a sign that you guys both do. Should no. you make one up now? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I could get Sue to do a secret love sign on the court. She's standing over there. Yeah, no. <laughs> she says no. All chance. of the like, all of the dramatics and the like entertainer and the the sort of theatrics that I have, like Sue's like, that's so embarrassing. I would never do that. Just tell her she like, doesn't like, like, say, like, like you. you're embarrassing, but like she's just like sh that would mortify her. She would never do that. You know what Pat always tells me to do when I score a goal is the robot. He fully expects me to adopt <laughs> like a full on celebration and start doing the robot. And I'm that. always like, I literally would never, but I'll think about it for the rest of my career. Well, I sure will. <laughs> I know Mar Marley always wants me to do something like that too. And I'm like, I haven't done it now. I don't know. Why I, I, where you am I going to pull that from? I mean, I it would be know. so funny. I've been wanting, be you know, my teammates from basically my entire career to step up there celebration games but you guys used to do cartwheels back in the day why did that stop yeah we had some like fun some like planned fun things going on maybe we should bring that back plan some fun stuff i, I want to do the bowling one. Oh, I, I would do that we got to get buy-in right. from everyone all right i'm i mean i'm definitely down to ask well there's three of us right lynn yeah yeah maybe yeah, that's all we need <laughs> i and when i was playing in um western new york Western New York. I mean, Western Sydney. Whoa. <laughs> um, oh, it was, we had a whoa. game on Christmas. And so when the person scored, they like sat on top of me, like they were Santa and everybody else was like the reindeers. It was the funniest thing. We should do that. If we ever have a Christmas game. Ooh, I hope we never have a Christmas yeah. game. <laughs> oh, that's true. Also <laughs> you make but a valid point. Saying. Yeah. But we can um, do a holiday specific. Going like back to uh, Sue's no look pass, don't you feel like you do that a lot though? Yeah, sometimes. Where you're like looking, but you're like doing this. You know, you're kind of like giving the side. It's like you're you're in your peripheral. Yeah, I feel you're like you do that all, all the time. Yeah, I, sometimes I kind of like. It's like I'm I'm like not looking anywhere, but I'm trying to see the. <laughs> the periphs going on. I'm actually blind. I'm not looking anywhere. <laughs> actually, yeah. It's like, it's kind of like one of those blank stares, but like I'm watching other things happening. I'm like, I hope they're seeing what I'm seeing, or maybe they're not, but I'm going to put it there. <laughs> I try. She's got some good, she's got some good no looks though. And in basketball too, there's, it's like, like you're running these, like you're running plays and stuff. So I feel like people are more on the same page in that way. And you've got these like short little, I wonder if That's I would have been a good passer. I probably would have had a lot of turnovers, but. <laughs> um, okay. So let's like shift gears to more serious stuff um, because we'll come back to the fun stuff at the end. Um, 
Sam, do you want to ask a question? I feel like I'm asking so many questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, yeah, I am happy to ask a question. I didn't know where we were going with this, but I, I'm, I have my list now, so I'm confident and ready to rock Sam, like, questions. Sam like bought a ticket to the show and she's just watching. Oh but- yeah, half, <laughs> happily would have bought a ticket to this show. Um, speaking of shows, Pino, you're so in the spotlight, like for especially the last couple of years, and we've talked about this before, but like in so many ways, you're the go-to person for like current topics and political issues. And we want to know like how you deal with feeling like you maybe have to be like on all the time or always have these like perfect answers to important questions. Mm, that's a good one. Um, I, I don't actually have the feeling of being like, necessarily like on or off i think i do think just naturally like i'm a i'm like a social person and i'm like like i love press conferences i love talking to the media i think it's just so lol and funny and like i, I feel like a lot of people that's like not comfortable for them and so that's like a, a stressful thing but i feel like i never feel like i'm you know one way and then i have to be another way like i feel like you know, when I'm with my teammates, I like to talk about these things. When my friends, I like to talk about these things. So in a part, like, I, th- I think it is a little easier because I don't feel like it's such an on and off. Now I do get like tired where I'm just like, okay, I need to just spend time at home or chill or do whatever. Um, I think with the topics, like sometimes that is hard. And I, I honestly feel, Sue and I talk about this a lot. I honestly feel like female athletes get put in this position where like, we just are naturally going to be asked about every single situation that's happening, whether we want to or not, because we're at the intersection of so many issues, whether it's like, you know, racial equality or, you know, gays in sports or, or just gay people in general, or like trans kids playing in sports or whatever. That's kind of been the most recent one. Like we're just going to get asked about that all the time. So that sometimes is like, a little unfair, I think, because men's sports like just don't get asked about that. Like if LeBron James doesn't want to talk about whatever, like no one's just going to like randomly ask him that question or, you know, ask him questions about that. So I feel like for us, sometimes we have to like know all of this because in a lot of ways it affects, you know, either us personally or players on our team, or we're kind of like at the intersection of things. Um, So there is pressure to like stay up on the issues, but then I also feel like, well, this is a really good opportunity to like use the platform to talk about an issue, hopefully in like an intelligent way and in a way that makes sense that that other people can understand, like maybe help be part of delivering like the message, I guess, or like putting the message out there in a way like that's also good. I'm like, okay, this is, you know, like the trans trans, uh, women playing sports is a perfect one because there's all this wild shit, right wings are just like, using this issue i'm like oh all of a sudden now you care about women's sports like (laughs) we haven't seen you know all of these people care about our sport the whole time so now it's an opportunity to be like no this is what's actually happening and this is what you know our sport actually needs and this is how we all feel about it and so i feel like a sense of not just responsibility but like pride in in being able to do that and being you know, one of the players that's able to do that. And then I think too, it just, it helps my teammates as well. I mean, I know I'm like older on the team and I like to talk about these things and I feel like it helps having someone who does like to do that and maybe can take burden off some of the other players or, you know, some people who are maybe still figuring out how to talk about these things or figure out, you know, how to be more comfortable in front of the media. So I feel like it's like kind of a combination of all those things, but I do think I'm like just, naturally more like comfortable in that position yeah i just had a follow-up lynn how do you like get confidence in your opinions if you hear of an issue or you have thought a certain way for a long time and you're gonna speak out about something how do you like i guess this is maybe just something i struggle with is i'll i look for like validation of my own opinions before i would be comfortable to speak out because i'm not sure if it's I've thought it through well enough or if I've read the right thing. So I'm just curious. I would look to you actually for a lot of things before I was comfortable to speak out myself because I feel like I trust your values and I trust what you stand for. 
Um, so I'm just curious how you find that confidence in exactly what it is you believe. I mean, I have a lot of like really great people around me too. And that will just either talk things through with me or check me on things or like brainstorm together. Obviously, Stu, um, you know, is first and foremost, like the most amazing one. I mean, we have like, it's like whatever I say publicly, we've talked about like for a thousand hours, you know, privately with friends and other people. And then just like, you know, a lot of these opinions like aren't just mine. I mean, I'm, I'm reading the same stuff everyone else is reading on maybe just, you know, have the voice to say it louder or have the, the platform to do that. But, and then I think, you know, the, the final thing is like, like you do have to believe it. Like you got to believe in these things. So I, I feel like I always say like, I don't know everything. I'm not the expert on this, but like, this is how I feel from my perspective or, you know, the experience that I have in the world. And like, I'm, you know, welcoming other, other opinions and like happy to talk about it. But I mean, there's some things that I just think like, it's not really an opinion or not just kind of like human rights are human rights. And those are being, um, Mm -hmm. trampled on or whatever, then that's just like a non-negotiable, but other things is like, well, this is just what I think about the situation and just use the experience that I have and all the people around me. Cause I feel like I have good people around me too. That would be like, "Eh, that wasn't really like, or "Mm, that's not really it or think about it this way, or this is actually a bigger context that you need to think about this in. And so that kind of helps form everything, which then I get, you know, out in front of people and I, I do talk about, and I think that's the thing, like I am willing to sort of talk about anything at any time, but it's because I'm like prepared to do that. And I think if I'm not, I, I would, you know, I'll just say that, like, I don't really know a lot about this or whatever. So I can't really speak on it, but I'll get back to you or whatever yeah. it is. But I feel like a lot of the issues sort of touch, you know, as women's athletes, female athletes, it's sort of like touches us anyways, like our sports just at the intersection of so much, I think. So it's kind of like gives you a different perspective to be able to speak on it. Yeah. Um, you obviously have like been at the center of like so many sport women's sports changing moments um how do you like what are things that you brush off versus what you like take seriously like how do you navigate that world I mean I think I learned very early upon supporting Colin and kneeling what to brush off and what to take seriously um and I really mean that I mean I think I'm also a little bit older in the social media like landscape where I didn't grow up with it like I came to it much later and so it is still kind of this like weird fake world that has very real world consequences so it's like this weird sort of thing um but I think that experience it just became so clear right away that like okay this is the like this is the game like this is the cynical part of the game where no matter what I say And no matter what I do or Colin does or anyone trying to change the status quo, this will always be the response. And so I was just kind of like, okay, well, like middle fingers to all that because the people who I trusted and who were reaching out to me or me reaching out to them or my family or like people in my life or, you know, close teammates, friends that I have, like that's where I get sort of my gauge from. And still to this day, it's like, if I really kind of fucked up, like my phone is ringing and it's people who have my number and like, (laughs) you know, it's not just random people. So I feel like I really try to stay in that. And, you know, it was, I mean, not to say that it wasn't hard because, you know, especially after kneeling, I mean, it was kind of wild and like, there was just so much hate and like vitriol happening around the whole situation. Um, but it kind of like made it all like really clear, like, okay, people are just going to have like really cynical, wild things to say. Um, and then I think that kind of, and I was a little older as well. I mean, I was like 30 or 31 by the time that happened. And then obviously like, you know, thinking like to the world cup in 2019 with kooky Trump, like tweeting at me, I'm like, this is so crazy. I'm like, (laughs) I'm just like, but I think being a little bit older and like having that experience and kind of having my like tight knit group already just made me think like, like it really was, I mean, it was wild when he tweeted at me, but I was also like, this is so crazy, funny. Like this is, I'm like, this is not even like grammatically correct. And I don't get it. I felt like at the end I was like, so you're into us? No. (laughs) I don't 
wrong but you're paying attention <laughs> so you're like watching I don't get it um but yeah I think my like tight group sort of not insulates me from that but like they'll they'll be the ones or you guys would be the ones my teammates would be the ones that would be like oh you're a little off base here and I listen to that do, not like all the trolls do you ever have to like um tell your family like hey don't engage like was that ever a conversation um since you're so outspoken yeah. so loud because I feel like with my like mom or my sister they like feel so protective and I'm like do not engage like whatever you do do not engage is that like something you've had to do oh yeah absolutely <laughs> well, I mean thank god mammer jammers is not um on social media and doesn't know how to use social media I mean still to this day this is what she does she wakes up has her coffee who knows she talks on the phone wiles out but then she gets on her computer and goes to her yahoo browser and she like gets in her search bar and her yahoo browser which i don't even know what that's run by probably bing or something and she googles my name to like no. find stuff like about what's going on but oftentimes like you know bad stuff will come up and i'm like mom that's like not i'm like who's the publication breitbart you know, it's like, this isn't, a, <laughs> it doesn't matter, but she's always like, she, she's obviously very protective and just wants me to be okay. And I think like stuff with the president and stuff back when, you know, 2016, she was like worried for my safety. And I'm like, it's okay. I'm safe. Like everything's fine. My older sister, she, she's like, it's funny. She actually wants to like wild out on everyone and she's very protective, but then she's always in my ear, like, you know, keep kindness the first thing, like don't go at people. Cause it's just like, the minute I go at someone, it's like, that's exactly what they want. Cause it's like egghead on Twitter that has like, you know, 13 followers. And it's like, I, you know, you can't even know yeah. you want to get in there and do it. But yeah, so she would, she would knock someone over for me, for sure. For the longest time, my mom would see like, someone had a, an account called like Christy Mewis and she would like comment <laughs> on my stuff. And my mom would be like, why is Christy like not cheering for you on your stuff? Like, why did she say this? Why did she say that? I was like, in this was years ago. My mom's probably listening to this, but I was like in college and th this person with this account wrote like go UVA when I posted a picture at UCLA and my mom was like so upset. <laughs> so upset. <laughs> she was like, Christy, you can't give out your password to people. Like, why are you? And I was like, mom, <laughs> literally anybody can make this name and post about it. Why are you giving your password out like that? Though? I know. I know. Christy, we're going to have to talk to Christy about that. Her giving her password out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to talk to Christy about how she has 19,000 accounts and why she has so I, many. And why they're, yeah, I know. It's it's crazy. And why they're Gosh, commenting they're not, they're on her not sister. Being nice to her you sister. should have just like kept that joke running with your mom. I know. To this day. You should I know. I know. This was, oh, this was 10 years ago. Okay, just so for my mom's uh, defending there. Okay, Pino, this is going to be fun now. Thank you for sharing all of that. It was I'm wonderful. Having a blast. Wait, I, I before we get to the fun, I want to know two come? things. Oh my gosh, yes. go. Okay, is there anything that you're struggling with right now? <sighs> and how uh, can we yeah. help? <laughs> I feel like I'm struggling with like motivation, like general motivation. And I feel like it's been a really long two years, but this year has been really hard because we like got to January. Oh, I guess we got past January 6th, which is wild. We got to January and everyone was like, everyone's good, right? We're going to go back and do, try to do all the normal things. And it's just it's like, we're all walking around with this like backpack full of, I don't know. It's like a giant size backpack or we're like miniature people in holding the pack. But like no one's talking about it. And I think we just like, it's been so much like through all the pandemic and all that. And then, you know, preparing to like go to a world championship and all that that entails. And then, you know, having it be a very different Olympics than has ever been. And like, frankly, I think you guys would probably agree, like not a super enjoyable Olympics in a lot of ways. And it was really hard. Yeah. And they were just like coming back in like, back in the season and back training and back playing and that, you know, and it's just kind of like wins the break. But I, I think it's like, things are just like going on. Things are just moving forward. And it's just that part 
to me is hard. I'm like, I feel like we all just need to be like, whoa. I know. I we take three months. I feel like, I mean, you wouldn't know because you weren't there in the bubble, but like, I feel like this year is that of like, I'm fine. But the second I got out of that bubble, I was like, oh, I was not fine. And like, that's how I feel like this whole yeah. year is. It's like, I'm fine. I keep saying mm-hmm. I'm fine. I'm fine. But I know the second we get to like, whatever the new normal is going to be, I'll be like, oh, I was not fine during that time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, I feel like I'm like, I'm fine. Right. You know, I'm not like, you know, falling apart over here, but I'm also just like, meh, feels real. Like just meh. Yeah. It's like, meh. So that's been a little hard. I think especially coming back from the Olympics, that's been a little hard. So like, what would you do to like, take care of yourself? How do you relax? How do you? I've been taking a lot more baths. Ooh, that's really nice. Preach. Yeah. I yeah. Love a bath. Little, good little um, Epsom salt. Oh, same. Um, I mean, I don't know how explicit we can get on here, but I do use cannabis and obviously CBD and I use cannabis and um, we weren't allowed to use it all during um, the Olympics and really like pretty much like the month leading up, um, which like for a really like stressful event, I feel like I'm hoping that cannabis will just be legal moving forward in, in the next Olympics and that athletes can use that as like a, you know, a mental health recovery tool, because I think it is really beneficial um, to just shut off and like, it's good for your body. And it's a way to, I, I find it hard. I think one of the things I struggle with too, is like always feeling like there's something to do and like, there's something more that you could be doing or it's like even when I say no to stuff like I still feel like sometimes I'm just like I just feel like I have something to do and I check my calendar like 84 times and I'm like I don't you know oh, I don't I know. have anything to do I just do need I? to relax yeah. yeah and so I feel like cannabis really helps with that when it's like I'm done with my day or mm-hmm. you know we're starting dinner or something and it's just like yeah I'm gonna either like smoke a little bit or you know use an edible and and just kind of like relax. And I, yeah, it's like, I, I hope that the conversation is opening up more around athletes and just people generally using it. Cause people always say like, Oh, grab, grab a glass of wine. Well, that's like the same thing as taking a puff and it's for the same exact reasons is because we all need to like shut off and just be out of the yeah. grind for a little bit. So I do that. Um, I mean, spending time with Sue has been amazing. Uh, I feel like we've gotten a lot more time post Olympics. I've been home a lot more. She had like one road trip and then she's back. And right now I'm injured. So I'm home. So that's really nice. Um, yeah, just kind of like chill. So you're planning the wedding. Well, well, I know it's like the wedding's going to have <laughs> to wait until this Rona gets herself gone. Cause that just, I can't even imagine having to plan something like I'm gonna have to bring Ryan Dell on to plan the wedding because <laughs> it's gonna be too many logistics for me to do myself. Do you only need Ryan could handle that. Only Ryan. Only do you Ryan need Dell. our addresses to send and an... yes. <laughs> <Just kidding>. Obviously. <laughs> I mean not everyone's getting one, but you guys are. Yes. <laughs> you guys heard it here, folks. <laughs> we are here. getting invited. Okay. Lynn, what would we wear? Well, tell, ask P, like she needs to style us. Oh, yeah, she would have to dress okay, so us. The, the invite has come in. <laughs> it was just delivered um, verbally. It will be a formal uh, invite that will come. You've been invited to the wedding. What are you wearing? That's the question. Yeah. Beige. <laughs> Definitely a full beige <laughs> outfit. <laughs> a beige suit. For I mean, me. I can't even. You would literally blend in. Oh my god! You know what's even to the Baja sand? Do you know what's even worse what? on me than beige? Light pink. I just look. <laughs> I look like flesh. Literally, literal, like flesh. yeah, literal flesh. Yeah, it's not good. So those colors can be avoided. Mm, they're absolutely out. Yeah. Um, gosh, I mean, this is a tough question. We're going to need, I think it's going to be in a warmer area. 
Um, so we're going to need some breathability. We're going to need some light and flight. We're going to need some like crotch aeration <laughs> for me personally. <laughs> yes. Some undercarriage airiness. <laughs> Facts. Facts. <laughs> that I, was gross. I, I'm, 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 no, I'm feeling you more in like, um, what about like a light flowy, but that has structure um either jumpsuit or like a high-waisted pant i'm gonna go darker love i think darker um i just love black too and then like a you know kind of a i'm imagining like a silk like spaghetti strap short mm. you know because your pants yeah. are coming high but like a blouse Ooh, like a nice like but it's airy it, this you is know, for me right a little Okay. Yeah, you can like bring a little jacket, but like you're probably not going to need it because we know how you get to dance. Be getting down. Get yeah. Lynn, I drinking. think we should dress the exact same. Do you have one fashion advice for like one staple piece you always have to have? One, I don't even know where this question's going. So pick it up anywhere. Well, I would say just for general fashion advice, like be comfortable in it. It doesn't really matter what it is if you don't like, you know, not necessarily like physical comfort, but that is a big thing too. <laughs> Cause sometimes you just have to wear shit that isn't comfortable, but you're like, it looks bomb, but like feeling good in it and like being comfortable wearing what you're wearing. Like it could be, you know, something as simple as like a, a t-shirt and jeans or whatever, but it's like, if you're not comfortable, it's just not going to like be right. So like be comfortable in whatever you're wearing. I mean, staple pieces, a good leather jacket, which are hard to come by. They are, it's like, there's a lot of them out there, but they don't all fit right. That's a good one. Um, don't have it. It's on the list. Have it. I mean, a good, yeah, like a good pair of like blue jeans, mm -hmm. like whether it's like Levi's or like, you know, 501 type boyfriend situations, like just a good pair of like go-tos that you can wear with anything. Um, a good trench, good long coat. Um, I would literally die of a, a heat stroke with all these things. I know. So yeah, you guys, <laughs> it's tough. Good vintage tees. Mm. Always, there's just always in style. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, goodness. Um, a good pair of loafers. Wear loafers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> loafers? <laughs> Yeah. what's even a loafer i don't even know what's a loafer you know like um i don't know loafers like yes you do you, sam yeah you know like you tried it didn't look good <laughs> oh yeah that my that and if you, that's what i'm thinking of then yeah that did not look good on me but i got like huge calves or ankles maybe or something i don't know what the deal <laughs> same, is same oh, it like oh. that doesn't count for us like because she has know, like skinny little yeah. like dainty okay. you're, you're not like a you're, you're not like a wildebeest like us i'll, <laughs> I'm, I'll speak for myself then you are well, beautiful well but, same but like i have huge legs so like it's in a beautiful way <laughs> thank you for the i'm a wildebeest i'm hairy i have a skin condition and i'm huge <laughs> i'm big no you're beautiful Lovers and a good blazer me. a good black blazer okay cool done all right but i got really some shopping the key, to do the key to style and fashion you just have to be comfortable and then you can start to like build from there. But you got to get your like comfort base down. So a lot of people okay. like, you know, wear a lot of stuff or buy a lot of stuff and it just like doesn't hit. And you're like, uh. yeah, like not like really the ball feeling it. Brothers. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. But it's like they have like their own. It's like they are very comfortable. Yeah, I'm in so comfortable. Wearing. It's just not different. hitting. It's a lot of sparkles. Yeah. And like stuff. It's a lot of flash. Yeah. yeah like rhine. Right. Well, I don't think they're rhinestones, but like rhinestones. Basically. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of rhinestones. <laughs> There's too many rhinestones. Oh God. Okay. Well, this is my favorite part of the podcast where we just pepper each other with random questions. So Love. what's your favorite place to vacation uh, i mean baja's pretty lit 
Baja is really cool. Good food. So beautiful. Dry heat. Good drinks. And good food. And great drinks. Oh, yeah. I need to be, I'm going to need to listen to this back and take notes on like almost everything she said. Um, got, a, got a bunch of recs for you. Favorite designer brand. Hmm. We, that's what we do here. We ask the hard hitting questions. Yeah, you really do. <laughs> I mean, I always love Gucci because they're like wild too. They got like wild stuff going on. Um, yeah, let's go with Gucci. Okay. Favorite fancy food or food? Sushi. Sushi can get real fancy. Oh, that's but, a good one. Oh, God, I love sushi. Okay. And I do love fancy sushi. Oh. Okay. I was like, just tell me it's expensive and I think it's better. <laughs> um, Do you like the sushi in Japan? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it was so like... good. Yeah, it was so good. I wanted like 10 more times of that. Yeah. Um, favorite restaurant in New York and in Seattle? Hmm. You know, one of our favorite restaurants in Seattle we're actually going tonight is this just little place called Betty. And it's like right around the corner from us. It's like, it's just like your local like neighborhood spot, but it's just good. There's like good vibes in there. We know everyone in there. They have a cute little outdoor patio. The food's good every time. They have like a great baked chicken. They always have a good seafood on the menu. They have good steak frites, bomb burger. Um, they do like oysters and mussels sometimes. It's just like chill, really good. We love that place. Um, yeah. In New York. Oh, there's a bomb place called Kiao. It's like a, I think it's like a Vietnamese-ish um, with some other flares in there, but just all share plates. It's down Tribeca. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, that. Great answers. Will you always have purple hair now? Or pink? Gosh. Color variation. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I wish it just upkept itself, you know, mm. it's a, just a lot yeah. of upkeep and it's annoying. It's like, when I see you with blonde hair but, now though, it's like, who's that? It looks like it was 20 great. years ago. I know. It's not great. I look like, but it looked, I mean, it's hard boiled egg. <laughs> oh no, you don't. <laughs> a little bit, especially when I wasn't like doing my eyebrows in that much. It was just like, <sighs> Monotone, but like it's just color. it's so funny because like at the time it looked fine i know what's that about? and then it's like as soon as i went pink i felt like i was like oh this should be my natural hair color who do i need to speak to because it's definitely not the the brown that's under here that's for sure so it's like i can't really it's like i'm gonna have to do something drastic with my hair so i might as well just keep it pink because i can't go natural it's not good okay so Dude, I'm with you. I, my hair, it's just an end. I'm not going to complain about it, but it's just an endless <laughs> battle to not be red. <laughs> you what are you going to do? Just let it go red. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Lynn, why don't you pick one, pick one more of these questions. I know you're going to want to hear about jewelry. Yeah. Bougiest piece of jewelry or jewelry you can't live without all one question. Oh, well, those are two different <laughs> answer signs for two different, the, the bougiest thing I have is um, a diamond Tiffany necklace that um, I actually did a shoot with my friend Carla, um, who's a stylist in LA and um, she's amazing. And her husband is a photographer. So she did this like um, online, like for Instagram or something, this little like Tiffany's thing. So I did get a big discount, which I was very thrilled about, but I had my eye on this piece for a while. So it's like a really pretty, it's kind of, it's rose gold and it kind of looks like more like old lady vintagey. It's not like, it's not like a tennis neck. It's not like bling bling, but it is, but it's like subtle. And the things that wow. I can't live without are just all my little, like, you know, in the shop. Oh, in, I know. In North, North Carolina, Carolina that yeah. I showed you. Yeah. The gold, I the gold shop. Wait. Yeah. I can't wait to go back there at some point. Like I'm, I'm loading up again. I still wear all of um, these aren't from there, but like, this is from there. Well, this is what I wear as my engagement band. Now it's the one that Sue's wearing. Um, I took off my own finger and put on her. Eventually I'm going to like, I just haven't found the something that's like, that's adorable, you know, amazing for an engagement band. Maybe it's just a gold band. That's from there. 
necklaces. Yeah, it's like he's got the best stuff in there. So all just like my little, you know, jewelry trinkets are. Okay. Beautiful. You got, got, you got that. that going on big time. Mine. I love Not jewelry. Me. Maybe someday. I love jewelry. Love, love, love. Okay. A watch is a good investment if you want to get into jewelry. <sighs> one one step at a time. We just got a big, <laughs> we just got a Gucci bag. That yeah. was a big step. That is a big step. It's just, but we're, we're not there yet. We're going watch shopping. I have a lot of ideas. Okay, oh, cool. if I ever am going watch shopping, it's going to be with you or with nobody. <laughs> or I'm not going. Or I'm not going and never getting okay. one. Okay. Let's well, when you go to the, the man in North Carolina, please take me when you come. Oh, absolutely. Amazing. It's a date. He's the best. Okay, Megan, thank you so much for being on. We love you. We this love was you. like such an, we are so honored to have you guys. Yeah. I just love you guys. This was awesome. We do have one request. If you could just say, if you don't mind, I'm Megan Rapino, and this is the Snacks Podcast from Just Women Sports. You got it. I'm Megan Rapino, and this is the Snacks Podcast from Just Women Sports. <laughs> wow. What a pro. One shot An wonder. Look at that, just delivering the promo line. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, <laughs> we, we owe you. We'll take you out to Nobu next time we're all together. Oh, I'd love that. You know, I love a bit of Nobu. Oh, I know. Okay, one, one last thing. We're going to say our, like, do our whole goodbye things, but can we get a, a chomp? from you like a yeah just one as many as you want whatever your take is on it <laughs> that wasn't a that snack was... that was a whole meal yeah that was my whole charcuterie board <laughs> wow all right that's gonna be like the new headline audio i think <laughs> i'm here for it i'm ready oh, oh my god Pino, thank you so much. That was like fun and awesome. And literally, we're so grateful that you did this. Love you guys. And thank you all for listening. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Our show is produced by Just Women Sports. For more great sports content, go to justwomensports.com. Be sure to subscribe to the newsletter and follow along on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'm Sam Ewis. And I'm Lynn Williams. And you've been listening to Snacks. (laughs) 